What's that? Is that the sound of the Empire's doom I can hear on the horizon? Yub nub and welcome all to Planet Mithril and my Star Wars Shatterpoint painting series. With the release of the new boxes and us finally getting some long-awaited Rebel Alliance characters uh, for the game, I'm deviating from the proposed schedule ever so slightly just to bring you the cutest, most adorable murder bear you ever did see. No, I'm not talking about him. Super cute, but also not talking about him. Yes, that's right, the Herald of Doom for the Empire, Wicket W. Warwick, the very first Ewok we ever meet in the original trilogy. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to my dear friend Oz at Rampage Games, who got my pre-order and my toys out to me super quick and as soon as he could for me to start bringing you this delicious, juicy, mwah, mwah, delectable Star Wars Shatterpoint content. So this is our wonderful little ball of fuzz that we're going to be painting today. As you can see, I'm going to be using a lot of different browns and pastels to bring out the tones of his fur, which complement well with the bright, vibrant oranges used for his hood, all tied together with the spot colours of green and orange that run throughout the palette. I'm going to be working up my wicket from a grey undercoat and will be primarily using the scale colour range of paints. A conversion chart for other ranges will be made available soon. Well enough jabbering on from me guys, brush is ready and let's get painting. I'm going to start base coating my furry little ball of terror here with a nice solid undercoat of brown leather. This is lovely and rich and will give a really good tone for me to work off later in the process. I'm focusing here on the arms, legs and back, leaving his face and soft undercarriage nice and clear. For his soft fluffy belly and face, I want a lighter tone which will complement the richness of the fur I've already put in place. For this, I'm going to be using Walnut as my base paint and just apply this in a few thin down layers over the remaining parts of the body. I'm only going to be applying a few base coats at this stage, mainly just covering the three main areas on Wicket as they stand. And I'm going to finish off my base coat stage by giving the hood a thorough coat using orange leather, a tone that I feel is really going to complement the other tones on the model. Now it's super important with models that have this much fur on them that you get as much definition and texture over that fur and the main body as you possibly can. I'm going to shortcut my process here by applying a shade to the brown areas of fur with some very heavily diluted Arbuckles Brown. I'm going to be working it into as many of these recesses and the inner texture of the fur as I can here. Now my shade has thoroughly dried, you can see how the texture of the fur has started to become more defined. Now begins the slightly more arduous task of reinforcing that texture. I'm now going to be using Bosch Chestnut and very carefully going around the darker brown fur, picking out the larger strands of fur. You can absolutely apply this as a dry brush if you, if you want to. Uh, the benefits of doing it this way, however, is that you have a lot more control and the fur looks a lot more realistic when you're finished. The benefits of dry brushing, you're, you're done in a fraction of the time. Okay, so now I'm happy with how Wicked's fur is coming along. My initial post shade layer is in place now it's time to raise the tone slightly. To do this, I'll be using Arabic Shadow and pretty much going over the fur again, using the Boss Chestnut layer as a guideline. I'm keeping a much finer point to my brush here to try and be as precise as I possibly can be. Now this process is time consuming, but I feel the results are definitely worth the effort. Also doesn't help this model is 80% fur. Now I'm super happy with how Wicked is looking, it's time for the final highlight. For this I'm going to be using Iroko and targeting just the tips and upper points of the fur. This will create some subtle movement over the fur and just help lift it to a more natural finished tone once I have this in place. That's the main body of Wicked's fur now done, it's time to focus on the other part. To start with, as I did with the other fur, 
The face and belly were given an all over shade with some heavily diluted petroleum grey. Again, pushing this into the recesses to define these areas of fur. Now I want a lighter and slightly more pastel -y hue for the face and belly fur, but I also don't want anything too drastically different in tone for risk of unbalancing the model. Following the same mentality as I did for the previous fur, I went over the face and belly with a 1 to 1 ratio mix of walnut and thra brown. The facial fuzz in particular is very well defined. Some areas of the belly are less so, so I'm having to paint in my own texture over some of these areas. I'm going to continue pushing the fur definition now by applying a layer using pure Thra Brown. You can build this up more gradually if you wish, but I decided to jump straight to pure Thra. Now I would discourage dry brushing at all over these areas of fur as you're likely to clip over the darker brown and cause blemishes over the hard work you've already finished and no one really wants that do they? I'm finishing off the lighter fur now with a 1 to 1 ratio mix of thra brown and birch. Working my way up through more of these natural and desaturated browns really helps capture the character of Wicket and complements well with the darker richer tones we've already put in place. And finally, the fur is done. Right, now the fur is finally done, I can move on to something slightly less eye straining. I'm going to be tackling Wicket's hood with some really vibrant burnt oranges now to provide a bit of a spot colour against all these browns. To begin with, I applied a manual shade to the recesses of the hood using Bosch Chestnut. This is dark enough to shade the recesses but not too intense that I lose realism over the material, so it's a perfect choice. Okay, now you can see my shade is in place and dry, I can start building up the hood cloth using Mars Orange. This is quite a jump in tone from the orange leather, but I'm applying this slightly thinned down to build up a slight blend, which just helps to soften the transition from the base and layer paints. You can see I'm building up the upper folds of cloth here, leaving the boss chestnut showing as much as I can in the recesses. Wicket's hood is really starting to come along now. You can see the natural flow and fall of material is really beginning to take shape. So I'm going to be further defining this now with a one-to-one -one mix of Mars Orange and Tiamat Orange. You can see the tone is becoming a bit more vibrant with the addition of the tear mat. It's actually quite a bright paint, so I wouldn't recommend any more than a one-to-one -one mix at this stage. But you always have the option of building up more gradually, should you wish. For the highlight stage, I want to deviate ever so slightly from the tone and vibrancy of the tear mat. Any more of that in this mix and Wicket will look like he's going to a rave rather than going to fight the Empire. For the final highlight stages, I decided to add in a small amount of Mojave White into the previous mix. This will do two things, desaturate the vibrancy of the tear mat somewhat and give me a really natural, yet still bright, almost sun bleached look to the upper folds of material. And the base coat stages are all finished now. Surely that means the model's done, right? Not yet, painters. Now I'm going to be tackling Wicked Spear. And I'm going to start off with a nice, solid base coat of walnut all along down the wooden shaft. Using Thra Brown now, I'm going to inlay some quick and effective wood grain texture into the spear shaft. By keeping the tip of my brush nice and fine, I'm going to draw the thra down the length of the shaft in thin, disjointed lines. You want the tip of your brush barely touching the wood, 
This would create some natural gaps within the freehand and reinforce the texture of the wood grain. At this stage as well, the strappings that sit towards the top of the spear were given a quick base coat, also using Thrile Brown. I applied a quick shade to the spear strappings now using the same diluted petroleum grey mix from earlier, letting this sink in between the recesses of the overlapping material. Once this was dry, I applied a layer to the edges of the spear strappings, again using Thrile Brown. The petroleum grey will give a slightly dirtier, more worn look to the straps, which we can then accentuate here with the layers and highlights. I then applied a quick, fine edge highlight to the edges of the straps, keeping my application tighter and thinner to try and show where the light is bouncing off the almost sharper edges of all the material. Just the spear tip to finish now, as the Ewoks tend to favour stones as one of their favourite weapons, I gave this a base coat with brown grey. Now I feel this has a more natural stone look to it rather than a darker or purer grey wood here. Now you can see the stone tip has a slightly mottled texture here and to try and pick out as much of that detail as I possibly can I'm going to be applying a very light dry brush using graphite. Awesome, I'm really happy with how the texture of my stone is looking now. I'm just going to be reinforcing the sharpness of the edges by applying a fine edge highlight using Nakar, using the dry brush details as a guideline. Never a more formidable stone was found in the wilds of Endor. Wicket's coming along really nicely now. All that's left are a few extra details just to tie the model together. The next stage was to carefully pick out his hands and feet using pink flesh, making sure I get all around the soles of his feet and gaps between the fingers. Well, both of them. It definitely feels very weird to be painting flesh tones on a cuddly murder bear like this. I want a slightly more washed out look to wicked skin tones just to heighten that alien element. I applied a layer next using Harvester Flesh, focusing particularly on the individual fingers, toes and the curvature of the feet themselves. The tips of the fingers and toes, along with the stress points that define the knuckles, were then carefully given a quick highlight with a one-to-one -one mix of Harvester Flesh and Moonray Flesh. I'm not adding any more Moonray than this, as it has a slight yellowy hue which I don't want becoming predominant over these areas. Now just the face and a few extra details, and our hero of the Ewok race will be ready for the tabletop. Using Petroleum Grey now, I'm carefully just painting in some subtle fingernails at the tips of his paws and applying a base coat to the eye recesses, nose and lips. Be particularly careful not to let this bleed out onto my finished fur. Now you're going to see how so much character can be achieved and finalised with the tiniest addition of paint. The eyes were given a pinpoint dot highlight in the upper and lower parts of the pupil using graphite. The nose and lips were given a quick targeted highlight here too. It's amazing what finishing the eyes can really do for a model, isn't it? At this stage as well, I went back over the top of the hood and carefully picked out the stitching that runs down the back and that's in place on the upper rim of the hood with petroleum grey. You can give this a further highlight with graphite after if you feel it's necessary. Now with the Ewok done, it's time to tackle the tactical branch that he's springboarding off of. If you've cut this off in favour of a more scenic base, well I guess keep watching anyway. To start off the log, I applied a base coat using brown leather again, making sure I work this into all the grooves, recesses and cracks in the grain. You can see there are some areas I've left bare, 
This is because I'll be painting this as moss later, so it doesn't necessarily need the brown base coat. I'm going to now apply an all over thorough shade with diluted Arbuckles Brown. I have mixed this with a small amount of petroleum grey as well, just to give the wood a bit more of an aged, crack look once this dries. Now my shade is thoroughly dry, I'm going to be pushing the tone of the upper layers now by using Gobi Brown. Now I'm looking to lightly feather this in place, following the same sort of mentality that I did for the spear shaft earlier on. This doesn't need to be neat or precise, so don't fret too much. I'm going to continue building up the tone of the tactical log now by using Iroko and following a similar process to that of the previous layer stage. Although here I am trying to be more precise in my application to create a nice flow from the darker recesses through to the lighter areas of wood grain. I'm onto the final stage of the model now and the final steps of tying this model together. With my log complete, I went back over and carefully picked out any leaves, vines and the big moss patches I left earlier using black forest green. The leaves were then given a layer using green skin flesh, leaving the black forest showing in the recesses. This was also applied to the moss, but this time with a dry brush, bleeding this out slightly onto the finished bark, so to give it a slight mossy, mouldy green tinge. And finally, an edge highlight was applied to all the greenery using spring green, just picking out the tips of the leaves, the outer curls of the vines, and again, as a very, very light dry brush, just to pick out the upper areas of moss. there you have it, the cutest, cuddliest, not at all vicious bane of the empire, Wicket W Warwick, finished and ready to hit the wilds and forest of the gaming board, spear in hand and a host of crazy furballs at his back. If I were a stormtrooper, I'd be ever so slightly concerned right now. Now the basing was done differently compared to our normal Shatterpoint bases, this was to better fit the theme of the forests and the, uh, the planet of Endor, don't you worry, there will be a tutorial for that coming out very very soon. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what you think of the new format. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications of video uploads. And until next time, guys, yub nub and happy hobbying.